Hey guys, how's it going and thanks for coming. I'm Nick and this is Real Life Money where we talk about real life and money because you know schools aren't so let's get started. So guys, this is another video of what stocks I'm looking to buy for the next month of May 2018. So guys, to be honest with you, the stock market has not been so hot this year, of course. If you've been following it at all, there's just a bunch of stuff, like every single day, more stuff is happening. Trump keeps opening his mouth, whether you agree with him or not, that's always happening with tariffs. Then, of course, the interest rates and tax reform, and there's just so many things that people are talking about. And right now, you can see the chart since the beginning of the year, it's basically down. You can see in February had a drop, in March it had a drop. So what the heck is going on? Now the market might not have a bunch of gains, however, that must mean that there are some buying opportunities out there. So that's what I'm going over with you guys today. So with the three stocks that I'm buying, I've been looking at different sectors, you know, with earnings coming out, earnings gonna be huge. Uh, company, uh, one of my stocks is actually coming out tomorrow. Right now it is April 23rd. All right, so stop rambling, let's get into it. So the first stock that I'm buying for May of 2018, no particular order, just looking at these three stocks. But let's start off with Bank of America. I recently was looking into bank stocks um, for a couple reasons. But first, let's look at what's going on with them. You could see their year-to-date chart has been basically just like everything else it is down uh, you could see that it did drop uh, that was probably in may there a bunch of bank earnings did come out and it wasn't too hot so right now they are on the low point uh, you could see they do have a dividend of a 1.6 percent nothing amazing but still good now I was really diving into a bunch of banks going over their financials, some research with that, and I actually have a table going over certain individual data points that I ended up looking at. But the main reason why I'm looking at banks right now, like I said before, is their earnings came out and they didn't do so well. You know, people were expecting banks were gonna do good with the tax reform, you know, lower taxes means more money for companies. Um, but that wasn't really the case. So they kind of dropped on that. Um, but I'm definitely interested in them for the long term for an increasing interest rate environment. Now, of course, this is going to be slowly but surely, but we are increasing our interest rates, guys. Uh, they might be expecting like three times for this year. Uh, that might change. It might not. Um, but each time they might raise it by like a quarter of a percentage point. So very slowly. Um, but we've been very low for years since 2008. Like we all should know at least. Um, but what does that mean? Well, if interest rates increase, banks could increase their rates with loans, whether it's mortgages, could be cars, maybe credit cards to some extent. extent. Um, but that means more money for them. So that's why I'm interested. I'll show you the data that I pulled. So this is an Excel sheet that I quickly put together. It's not pretty and I really don't care about that part, but it has some good information here. So you can see along the left column are the companies that I was looking at. You can see I was looking at their dividends, PE ratios, forward PEs, uh, PB is price to book, and then peg ratio. Um, so these are kind of the big ratios that I started looking at with them. You could see I was looking at JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, and the last is BlackRock. So basically what we have going on here are big banks and investment banks or financial institutions like Goldman Sachs and BlackRock is part of those investments. Uh, but let's see what we have going on. So, of course, we have the dividend. It's not a deciding factor, but it's always good to look at what you could get. If it does go down, you kind of just hold it. Then it just turns into kind of like an income play. So not bad at all. Um, but looking at their P.E., I learned to look at similar companies in the same industry. So you could see you have some a little bit higher valued, some undervalued if you look at P.E.'s. Um, but the lowest right now is Wells Fargo at 
five five. Um, and then the other ones like JP Morgan, Bank of America, those are kind of more fairly valued around the 17, 18, 19. But even more attractive is the forward PE. You can see they're very low compared to the other, you know, overall market between like 9 to 11. Again, the lowest as well as Fargo under 10. Um, Bank of America at 10.43. So, so far, if you're looking at like the value, you might think of Wells Fargo as an interesting play. And I thought about them. I played with them a couple years ago, like one or two years ago, when they had that fraud scandal, right? With the credit cards going on, they open up like millions of credit cards without people knowing this. Um, so they first estimated might have been like around a million and a half customers that this happened to. So I'm like, this will blow over because it did drop. So I got in, then it rebounded just as expected, which most stocks do. And I made a few bucks with that. Nothing crazy, but that's how I played it. Um, now it's probably going to do that again. Uh, and by the way, that estimated one and a half million customers. Uh, yeah, it turned out to be like double that of around three million. And recently, again with Wells Fargo, they're being fined $1 billion because they're screwing around with mortgages and, you know, adding fees that aren't necessary. So again, screwing people out of their money. So at this point, to be completely honest, like, yeah, it's probably going to rebound just like always. The dividend is pretty solid at 3%. You know, Warren Buffett owns it. But I'm looking at the culture right now, guys. Like, why would you want to bank with people that are basically incentivized to sell you things, especially when you don't even need them? Um, right now, they're just, I, I wouldn't want to bank with them. It's just their, it's their corporate culture to do this to people and I just, I wouldn't trust them. So they're probably a great bank and everything, but just the culture recently, I, I really don't want to touch them just cause this stuff keeps happening. And I don't like that mindset. So that's why I'm kind of fading away from that. You guys could think differently. If you want to swing trade that, you could probably make money. Don't get me wrong. Personally, I just don't like it. Um, so I kind of crossed that out off the list. Um, but to move on, I want to look at the peg ratio at the end. Um, peg ratio, I was doing a little bit of research and it seems like ratios under 1% are overall undervalued around one, well, not percent, but around one is fair valued and over one is overvalued. So if you look at that, you could see Bank of America and Goldman Sachs are under one. And this was kind of a deciding factor for me. So this, what this is, it compares um, price to expected growth for the next five years. So the price to the future earnings. Um, so that's actually very low for Bank of America, which makes it very attractive to me. So kind of all those factors of kind of like one of the lowest PEs of those companies that I was looking at, peg ratio low. And I was also looking at like the income statement and balance sheet of all these banks. Of course, these all, all these banks are fine. Um, but I was definitely looking at the net income. Now the net income of Bank of America is actually increasing. Other banks I saw, it was kind of fluctuating. Now it might have things to do with like, um, you know, income tax and maybe the tax break might be beneficial for them in the future. Um, but it just seems like Bank of America is more of a steady growth for me, which is why I like them better. Now, while doing some research, just a little side note for you guys, cause I know people are talking a lot about a crash going on. And you know, if it's going to happen in 2018, 2019, before the election at some point. Um, now, of course, no one really knows what's going to happen. Um, but I was looking at investment banks during the crash of 2008. Um, so some companies like uh, Goldman Sachs and BlackRock. Now they crashed just like the market and you know, they dropped by like 50%, but they rebounded very quickly. They rebounded in like with like a year. Um, so I was looking at like from July to July, it was back to where it was. Um, and that's due to like people trading, people are 
you know, stocks are low, people are able to buy more into the stock market or whatever. So that drives sales for investment banks. All right, let's keep moving on. I can't dwell on something too long. So the second stock that I'm looking for May in 2018, a stock that I mentioned before, and also what I have in my portfolio. Now, real quick, guys, I did have another video going over my personal stocks in my portfolio. I told you guys like the certain percentages that I have with my stock. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check it out. But the second stock that I'm looking at is Corning Incorporated. Now you could see by the chart right there, it's not attractive whatsoever right now. Um, but right now you could see it, it is down for the year. They do have a dividend of around 2.6%. And this was the company I was talking before about their earnings. Right now it is April 23rd and they are releasing earnings tomorrow, April 24th. Now real quick about the company, they provide glass to a bunch of companies out there. You know, they might, they put it on smartphones, tablets, TVs, they might get into the automobile industry. Uh, they are with like fiber optics, telecommunications. Uh, they're in like, life sciences with medication and all type of stuff. So they're very diversified and been around for like 150 years. And they invest a lot in research and development. So they're constantly being innovative in this market, which is extremely important because the market is constantly changing as we all know. Um, but this earnings should be very interesting and could bring a buying opportunity. Now, I listened to a conference call for their last earnings. And, you know, a bunch of their different businesses that I just said before are increasing very nicely. Their main one, displays for TVs, is slightly decreasing. But overall, a bunch of their companies are increasing by double digits. Now, in the conference call, they are expecting that the first half of the year isn't going to have much growth at all at all this is expected to happen so with this earnings tomorrow it actually might drop the stock because if they're not going to hit like new high growth potential with all these different businesses investors aren't going to be too happy about that now their growth what they're expecting to see is in the second half of the year so that's why i'm holding onto this stock um, I recently started buying them in the beginning of the year. So with this earnings coming out, I feel like this could be a good buy. Now, if you look into the financials a little bit, you could see their net income for last quarter is actually in the red. They didn't do so hot. The reason, which a lot of people might have missed on if you did some research, is that they actually had a one-time expenditure. Um, I think they purchased some business from 3M, I want to say, um, but it was definitely costly. So it cost them, it might've been like four or six million dollars that took out of the net income. So regularly, if you actually withdraw that expense, which normally isn't there, it's actually a positive net income. So I think with this earnings, they might show some positivity there. So it might increase as well. So kind of depends on where the stock goes. If it drops, I'll get in. If it increases, that's fine too. And if you haven't noticed, this is another dividend play. I said since the beginning of this year that I want to be more cautious in stocks. You know, 2017 was phenomenal. Uh, you could have easily gotten like 20, 30, 40, 50% returns. 2018, not so much at all, complete opposite. So that's why I kind of want to get into some dividends. So if your stock is steady, which it kind of has been for a while now, you're still getting those dividends. So I find that very attractive with their dividend is 2.6%. And last, but certainly not least, the third stock that I might be buying for May 2018, especially with earnings around the corner on May 1st, is Apple guys, Apple is doing, you can see the year to date chart all over the place. Um, but here's the thing, you, their earnings is on May 1st and this could make it very, very interesting. And don't forget this is a kind of a dividend play as well of 1.4%. Nothing incredible, but good. 
So Apple's earnings guys, largest company in the world in the stock market and it's just like the overall market has been all over the place. Now people are looking at the supply, well the demand for iPhone X sales and they're kind of lower than expected and people are like this is the top for Apple, there's nowhere to go and that's it. And if you actually look at previous years in Apple, I think it was around like 2016 area, that it was fairly flat for Apple. But then after that it increased. So yes, the demand might be lower than expected. However, if you actually look at the year over year growth of Apple, there is still opportunity out there for them. I just checked their revenue year over year since last earnings and it was up over 12%. So this could be a game changer guys. Um, now on the side as well, they have been buying back their stock just like a lot of companies out there with stock buybacks. Um, but here's the thing. So if the stock drop, and by the way, I would get into it after earnings. I don't like predicting earnings because they might beat it, but at the same time, the stock could go down at the same time. So it's very difficult to see what the heck is going on during earnings. Um, so I would make a play after the decision. Um, but if Apple does go down, it would be very interesting because that's a buying opportunity, in my opinion. Um, but if it goes up, that could trigger something else. Apple is a huge company, guys. The largest and basically in every mutual fund out there, every index fund. So here's the thing. If Apple destroy, I don't want to say destroys, they might destroy their earnings. But if they beat their earnings and go up very nicely, the market's going to go up. This might trigger some type of rally. It might have a rebound in the stock market. Am I sounding optimistic? Yes, I am. Um, but it definitely is possible. So I'm going to hold on to them. They are a large portion of my portfolio. So if they go up, that's great. If they go down, I might have to look at them again. And we got a bonus stock that I'm watching, not necessarily buying, but I'm still watching. I think I mentioned it last month. I noticed a lot of people were definitely interested in the comment section. They were talking about it. Um, but this is a solar company. So they are called Solar Edge Technologies, S-E-D-G. And for the like 52 week is over a 200% return. Um, but you can see their recent jump. So that's why I'm kind of iffy about them. Uh, they do have earnings coming up kind of early May. So if they drop, I might have to play with them a bit. So that was kind of a bonus thing of a stock that an extra stock that I'm watching for May of 2018 guys. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Earning season is going to be interesting. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Real Life Money, where we talk about real life and money. I just started an Instagram account if you guys want to follow. Again, if you're interested in the stocks that I have, I'll leave a link somewhere so you could check those out as well. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.